Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is a former head of the Shin Bet, Israel's internal security services, Ami Ayalon. He was also the commander in chief of the Israeli uh, Navy. Uh, he's one of six former Shin Bet heads who are featured in a documentary called uh, The Gatekeepers, a very powerful a uh, documentary where they speak out, some of them for uh, the first time. Before uh, we get to the idea behind this movie and its mm -hmm. potential impact okay. on Israeli society, I want to begin with the current uh, situation. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some tensions, again, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, in Gaza, also in the West Bank. Some mm -hmm. are raising the specter of a third intifada. What is your take? Um, I, I'm not sure that what we shall see in the future will be um, what we call third intifada. Um, we have to understand that um, for uh, intifada uh, require a lot of energy in the street, in the Palestinian, in the Palestinian street, and uh, <clears throat> and I'm not sure that uh, this energy uh, exists. Uh, but uh, what I can tell you is the way I understand uh, the status quo is very unstable. Uh, we shall see violence ahead of us unless we shall change uh, the course of the actions uh, on the political level between Palestinians and Israelis, whether it will be a kind of a popular uprising that we call Intifada, or whether it will be a kind of a terror uh, the kind of the global jihad or al-Qaeda that does not need this kind of energy in the street, I have no idea. Why well, do you fear that global jihadist groups are getting more and more involved in Israel fear. and the Palestinian territories? I don't fear, I know it. Uh, I know that, uh, first of all, uh, among Palestinians, we can see it uh, in Gaza today. Uh, surprisingly or not, uh, in Gaza, the Hamas today is uh, relatively uh, the responsible and the pragmatic uh, power in Gaza. Uh, we see cells of, uh, of radicalism uh, that uh, are related to the global jihad and Al-Qaeda. Uh, we see it uh, almost every day in Gaza, and we know that there are signs uh, in the West Bank uh, but the assumption is that uh, if humiliation and despair uh, and lack of hope uh, will follow, um, yes, what we shall see uh, will be a kind of a popular violence, or if not, it will be uh, a different kind, which is uh, the global jihad uh, kind of, of terror. Okay, I want to get to uh, this documentary uh, yes. in which uh, former head of the Shin Bet speak out with a very strong <coughs> message. I'm just very broadly summarizing, but mm -hmm. they're saying the politicians are not doing the right thing when it comes to dealing with the Palestinian issue. Mm -hmm. We've been in charge of uh, repression, sometimes very violent, mm -hmm. but this is probably not the good thing for Israel. Is this the message? Uh, well, um, l let me put it in, 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 in a different word, um, the message, the way I understand it, that, uh, that we are heading nowhere, we, the Israeli society, um, and, uh, and if we want to see ourselves in 10, 20, 40 years from now as a Jewish democracy, or in other words, as a safe place for Jewish people and a democracy, we have the, to have, we, we have to change the course of our actions, and uh, and we have to accept the idea that two-state solution is our interest. We are not doing it for the international community. We are not doing it for the Arab world, and we are not even doing it for the Palestinians. We are doing it for ourselves. And, um, and last, we believe that it is in our hand to speak to the Palestinians and to come closer to create a reality of two states. 
why is it so important for security type of people to speak out? Is it because the peace camp in Israel 20 years after Oslo is in tatters and you feel that people who deal with security and are not afraid uh, to be tough can send a powerful message that can reach a broader uh, amount yes. of people? Probably. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm in a position uh, as, as a political analyst, but the way I understand the Israeli society, um, the security community still play a major role um, among, among Israelis. And, and, and we have the credentials. Uh, we are doing it uh, as, as people uh, who have been there. Um, we, we saw it from the inner side. Uh, we met Palestinians. Uh, we have been fighting um, everywhere. Uh, in my case, uh, I don't know, um, all over the Mediterranean and in Egypt, Syria, uh, Lebanon, everywhere. And we understand since, um, I think that the major factor for Israelis is security. We can explain to the Israelis why it is important from the security aspect not only from the moral aspect, not only in order not to lose our identity as a democratic society, but we are the people who can explain it to the Israelis that it is most important even in order to keep Israel secure and safe in the future. Does it mean that for years when you were in office, you followed orders that you knew would harm Israel or did you believe in them at the time? No, uh, I think that each of us, in my case, uh, when I was a director of the Israeli Shin Bet, uh, we had a peace process. Uh, I served uh, three... From 95 to 2000. Uh, yes, um, in my case, yes. This was exactly the case. And, uh, and in my case, um, we cooperated with the Palestinians uh, fighting terror. I used to meet uh, Jibril, Jibril Rajoub, Mohammed Ahlan, and Amin al-Hindi uh, almost every month in order to create security for Palestinians and for Israelis. Because we used to believe that if we shall provide security, our politicians, our political leaders will be able to provide a political solution. So, uh, and yes, uh, there were cases, uh, I even remember in my case, um, that uh, when the idea of settlements uh, was discussed in the cabinet, I said, if you want to discuss settlements, uh, it is okay. Uh, I will leave the room because settlements is a political issue. It is not a security issue. So uh, if the question is, uh, why did we speak? Why didn't we speak earlier? Um, I believe that each of us uh, spoke earlier, uh, but then uh, we said what we think uh, to the prime minister or to the defense minister and not to the public. In parallel, uh, several former heads of the Mossad, the external mm -hmm. security services, yes. have challenged mm -hmm. the politicians on the issue of Iran, mm -hmm. essentially saying, oh, there's more time to negotiate, don't go to war. Right. Why are the security people in Israel challenging the politicians. The politicians are not doing their job properly. Is this the message? Well, I, uh, <clears throat> again, I'm not in a position to, uh, to But it's uh, unusual. You, it's uh, unusual. I don't think so. Yeah. At least I'm not sure. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure I, I know how to compare, but at least the way I understand it, and I'm speaking as an Israeli, uh, a member of the, of the intelligence and security community for almost 40 years, uh, we have been there. We know what is the meaning of war. Uh, we were almost in every battlefield. So we are not very happy uh, to pull the trigger. Uh, we know what will be the results, and we know how easy it is to start a war and how difficult it is to end a war. So... Um, I believe that most people in Israel, my friends, uh, became much more pragmatic when it comes to the political debate, whether to launch a war or to wait 
and to see the war only as a last resort. Uh, as a conclusion, I, I said earlier, we're 20 years after Oslo, yes. no peace process to speak mm -hmm. of, or no yes. real peace process. What's the future for Israel? Apartheid? No way. You know, I, uh, I, I, I don't think, I, even can think of it. Uh, well, some people do. <clears throat> okay, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the answer. So um, I, I believe that uh, we, we do not have the luxury to give up on the idea of two states. Uh, probably some other people can do it in Europe or in America. When I say we, I believe that most Israelis, uh, since for us to give, up, to give up on the idea of two states is to give up on the idea of Israel as a safe home for Jewish people and a democracy, we, 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 we cannot see it but within the context of two states. So I believe that we have to understand that we have to try to understand what were the mistakes that we did in the past and to try to change uh, the concept of direct negotiations. If you ask me, uh, I think that we Israelis um, should tomorrow uh, pass the law of bringing back those settlers who wish to return and are living on the eastern side or outside the major settlements, we know that in the future it will not be under Israeli sovereignty. They know it. And according to our polls, uh, between 25 to 30 percent of them wish to return immediately into the state of Israel and would do it tomorrow if the government will allow them and will compensate them, and they deserve it. Thank you for your comments, and thank you for watching this edition of the interview here on France 24.